Hey everyone, my name is Emily Rose and I venture guess that almost none of you know who I am apart from a small handful of uh, teachers that were there when I went to Glacier Beak back in 2014. Miss Coron actually reached out to me to talk to you all about service and why I decided to donate to your fundraiser to help out the Snohomish Food Bank. Um, since a lot of you don't know who I am or who I was in high school, let me start with this. I was not a spectacular student. I was nice, I was kind, um, but I wasn't the best at academics. I wasn't a valedictorian, I wasn't a class president, I wasn't a star athlete or musically artistically gifted, and I struggled in chemistry and still to this day I'm really unsure as to why moles have anything to do with it. Uh, I never took an AP class and I graduated with a GPA of 2.4. By all accounts, I was not a fantastic student on paper. But with all that being said, I can tell you what I did do in high school, and I served. I was trying to think of the way in which I wanted to frame this all for you, and I thought about the three pillars of service that I've learned throughout the years. Those three parts are community, people in your corner, and yourself. The most important thing that I've learned throughout the years is that there's no one right way to give back to your community, and most of the time, really all that's needed is your presence. People need to see others show up. During my senior year, there was a need for people to stand in the freezing cold outside the grocery store and collect cans for the food bank. I thought about signing up to do it, but I didn't ultimately because I didn't want to be inconvenienced by the cold and the rain, and to be honest with you, it's not how I want to spend a Friday night. I went to school the next day when my friends walked up to me and said, I put your name on the list in Sharpie in all caps. It took up two lines, and um, you can't back out. I asked her why she put my name on the list in the hallway, and she responded, because people need to see others doing service. You were the homecoming queen. Everyone knows you. If they see someone they know signing up for something like collecting cans with their friends, then others will do it. It's that simple. And it really was that simple. It dawned on me that she was asking me to use my community and my influence, the little that you have in high school, to give back to the community that we all shared. Sometimes the service requires that we sacrifice the warmth of our own home in order to provide that warmth for others. This has stuck with me through the years. Uh, it reminded me that you have influence in your community no matter how big or small it may be. Very few people have the financial abilities to write checks for their service, have buildings named after them for the money they donated, but we all share the ability to take time out of our day for others. It's the great equalizer. Service to people in your corner is another big part of service. And what do I mean by this? These are the people you know and support you, even when you mess up. For me, these people in my corner are my parents. For you, they could be your history teacher, your aunt, grandparents, best friend. Just someone you know who's there for you. I can guarantee that even if you don't feel like you have that person in your corner, you do. And if you're lucky, you have multiple. I would even venture to guess a lot of you have a teacher or a coach or advisor of some sort that is rooting you on. I want you all to take a moment think about who this person is or who they were. How did they make you feel? How did they show up for you? I know for me that feeling feels safe and supported and like I was seen. In the time I've left high school, I've lost both my parents, and I only say this because people in your corners will not be there forever, but the lessons you learn from them and the way they made you feel will be. My parents showed me that high tides raise all ships and that when you're in a position to help, you do exactly that. You help. My mom would always listen to me complain about how bad I was at math, and when I was done, she said, yes, you may be the worst in the family at math, but you're the best in the family about talking to and for other people. Anyone can do math, but not everyone has people skills. Of course, it's taken me time to realize that she was right, but that's the thing. She saw in me what I could not see in my own myopic view of myself. As I've gotten a little bit older, I now realize that not only was she right, but I used my people skills way more than I used my math skills. This is where the service comes in. You have every capability to provide for others what the person in your corner has provided for you. There's a real power in seeing that other people may need help and helping them in any way you can, even if that is showing them a part of themselves that may be hidden. The final piece I want to talk about is perhaps the most important, and that is service to yourself. Uh, everyone in this room has been in high school. Uh, I know that high school is tough, and being a teenager is terrible sometimes. And I know that when I was at Glacier Peak, I felt like the world was so small, that high school was the most important thing to ever exist, it would ever happen. And everything was so hyper-focused on college and getting asked to school dances and how many days were left in the school year and what everyone was doing for spring break. On my first report cards at Glacier Peak, nearly every teacher wrote that I talked too much in class. After that report card, I was gutted. I stopped talking in class and really went inside myself. I confided in teachers because in my mind, no one wanted to hear what I had to say. I was so focused on everyone else and how every people saw me that I forgot who I was to myself. But then I remember what my mom had told me, people. I was good at people. So sophomore year on, I talked to everyone I could. People that I had nothing in common with, people I had too much in common with, and people in between. I trusted myself and realized that it was a disservice to myself to not be who I was, and changing myself not for myself, but for others. 
What I learned is that the truest form of self-service is to be true to yourself and the company you keep. There's so much power, like I said, in being yourself and not compromising on those qualities. To bet on yourself and trust that you'll get where you need to go in life. You just may take the least direct route sometimes and end up a few dead ends. Find what you love and don't compromise on that. You deserve to follow whatever you want in life and not waste time, let alone four years questioning that inner voice and thinking more about others and their perception of you. Service to yourself, ultimately, is realizing what makes you you. That's the biggest service one can do. And you may be asking why I'm saying this to you. Uh, I'm saying it because I wish that someone would have said this to me in high school. I wish I would have heard that the kid constantly getting comment that they talk too much in class, be successful, and achieve everything they set out to do, and eventually be invited back to do what all the teachers remarked that I did too much of, talk. See, proof that maybe a critique is just your roadmap to your superpower, and by following it, you give the biggest act of service to yourself. The validation to be who and what you are meant to be. I want to leave you with this, and if you've not been listening up till now, I totally get it. Assemblies can be long, but just listen to this part. Service is never spectacular, but it is consistent. I know that I consistently showed up for my friends. I consistently support my communities in the way I knew how. I consistently messed up, and I'm sure that I can sense some of my old teachers nodding quite hard to that one, uh, but I also consistently apologized. I knew when I messed up. I realized early that people don't need amazing, but what they need is consistent. To leave you with this to think about, um, and it's something that I often remind myself. If you can be kind, be kind consistently. If you can serve others, serve others consistently. And most importantly, if you're not sure where or when to start, then start with yourself and go from there.